Here's a post from Quad McFly on RC Groups, and if you'll go check out this thread, you can actually see several responses from other really smart people, like Quad McFly, who's also really smart, uh, talking about this issue of motor timing and what should you use for your motor timing in BL Heli. Uh, now, you probably, if you're like most people, don't really understand what motor timing is, and you may be using guidelines like, oh, for high KV motors, use high motor timing, or for sometimes you see guidelines like, based on the number of poles that the motor has, you use certain motor timing. And I think Quad McFly does a great job here of summing up why that kind of advice is not terribly useful. Because there isn't really a good general guideline for what the optimal motor timing is. Actually, the best general guideline for what the optimal motor timing is, is what he says down here at the end, is that in general, you should just leave the motor timing in BL Heli on medium because it's generally the right choice for most motors that we're using today. And if everything else I say in this video and what Quad McFly says here in this post goes over your head, take that. D just don't screw with your motor timing. You don't need to, probably. But if you're interested in going a little deeper, there's some really fascinating stuff in here, and I'm gonna do my best to sum it up in a way that helps it not go over your head, but go into your head. Let's see how good a job I do. So let's start by talking about the structure of a three-phase motor. And I've borrowed this diagram from the internet. Thank you very much, internet. A three-phase motor is composed of a magnetic rotor that spins and some electromagnetic poles that have windings of wire around them. And when current flows through the wire, a magnetic field is set up just like the old experiment that some of us did way back when we were kids, where you wrap a wire around a nail and you put a battery on the wire and it becomes a magnet. So when current is fed through this wire, this pole becomes magnetized and depending on the polarity of the magnetic field, it will either attract or repel the magnet on the rotor. And you can see that if the, ro if the rotor was facing one direction, and we turn the magnet on, the rotor will be pulled around to face that magnetic, that magnet, the magnetic pole. There we go. And you can then see that if we were to alternate the current between these poles at, with the right timing, we could suck the magnetic uh, rotor around here and then pull it over here and then pull it over here. And if we do that very, very fast with the right timing, the rotor will spin in a circle. Okay, and that's basically how a three-phase motor works. The poles are magnetized in a sequence that pulls the rotor around in a circle. Now, there is one difference between this diagram and the way most of the motors we use are constructed. This diagram is for a type of motor called an in-runner motor. And in an in-runner motor, the poles are on the outside and the magnetic rotor or the, sh the motor shaft is here on the inside. But the way our motors work is that the poles are on the inside and the rotor or the bell is on the outside. The exact same principle applies, but I don't want you to get confused by the fact that the spinning thing is on the inside in my diagram. And on our motors, the spinning thing with the magnets on it is on the outside. So don't let that confuse you. Now in this process, the timing of the energizing of the poles is very important. So what we need is we need the magnet to reach this pole and get sort of slingshot past this pole. And just as it's slingshotting past this pole, we need this pole to de-energize and this pole to energize. So that just as the magnet slingshots past this pole, it starts getting sucked over to this pole. Whoosh, and it gets sucked past, right? And we need them to be synced up very, very closely with the actual speed at which the rotor is turning. And you can imagine that if we got in a scenario where the magnet was, let's say the magnet is just coming around to here, and instead of energizing this pole, we accidentally energize this one. We're now pulling the rotor the wrong way, and we will, we will, we'll, we could get a desync, is what that's called, or or other bad things can happen. So we need the magnets to to, to energize in a coordination, in synchronization with the actual physical position of the rotor. And that's accomplished, there, there are various ways you can accomplish that, and three-phase motor design is a complicated topic that I'm actually not really very qualified to talk about at a higher level. I'm just, uh, I'm just slightly smarter than you are on this topic, and I'm going to try and not try and stay within the bounds of my knowledge. But the way that it's done in our motors is, is called back EMF detection, or BEMF detection. And essentially, back EMF 
uses, so at any given point, we're energizing two of the three phases to energize one of the three poles, okay? The third phase, which is not being energized, receives voltage, and that voltage is proportional to the uh, position of the magnet relative to the pole. So we measure the voltage on the third unused phase, that's called back EMF detection, and as that voltage rises, it tells us that the magnet is getting closer and closer to the pole. And we can use that to determine the physical position of the magnet and use that to determine when we should raise the current on the magnet so as to slingshot the magnet or the rotor past the pole rather than stopping it or, or causing a desync. Now, how does motor timing come into this? Well, from the moment that we switch the FET on and current begins to flow into the winding, there is a delay between the time that that happens and the buildup of the magnetic field that then sucks the rotor towards itself and slingshots it away, okay? That doesn't happen instantaneously. You can think about if you were pumping water into a water balloon, right? It would take a minute for the balloon to fill up. And the magnetic field of the winding is kind of like that. So we pump current into the winding and as that current flows the magnetic field fills up with energy and at a certain point it saturates and becomes full of magnetic energy and it is at its strongest point and that's when we want that magnet of the rotor to get sucked and slingshot by and then actually what happens next is the magnetic field reverses and we push it by so we we pull when it's on this side and then we reverse the current and we push when it's on that side and likewise then we start pulling here and pushing there but that takes time and we need to know how early we need to start pumping current into the winding to make sure that at the moment that 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 rotor gets close, that magnet gets close to the pole, that we then have a very, very strong magnetic field, and then we reverse it and we whoosh, push it by. So we need to know how long it's going to take the winding to fill up with magnetic energy. One of the things that's a function of is the inductance of the magnetic coil itself. The more inductance the magnetic coil has, the longer it will take to fill up with magnetic energy, and the earlier we would need to start pumping current into the coil in order to get the timing correct. Another thing that's a function of is the motor RPM. The faster the motor is spinning, the less time we have before it gets to the pole and passes it. And again, the earlier we need to start pumping current into the coil in order to get the, the sink at the moment where the, the magnet is just passing and the current is maximized, or rather the magnetic field is maximized. A third thing that's a function of is the strength of the magnets on the rotor. The stronger the magnets on the rotor, the stronger the back EMF is going to be. And the earlier we will get notice that the, the, the uh, rotor is about to be in the right position. And so if you had a fixed timing, but you changed the strength of the magnets on the rotor, you would misread the position of the rotor and your timing would no longer be correct. So you would potentially need to adjust your timing based on the strength of the magnets on the rotor. All of these things together play into what the correct timing is going to be. So the stronger the magnets, the earlier you detect the position of the rotor, and maybe then the later you could start filling the magnetic coil with energy. The more inductance the coil has, the earlier you need to start. The faster the motor is spinning, the earlier you need to start. And all of that plays into what the optimal motor timing will be. So now let's go take a look at what Quad McFly is saying and see if we can make sense out of what Quad McFly is saving, saying, given this new information we've got. Timing has to do with how early in the back EMF detection cycle the FETs start switching. So the back EMF detection cycle, the back EMF is rising and then it peaks and then it lowers as the magnetic pole, uh, as, the, as the rotor, as the magnet on the rotor passes the magnetic pole, okay? Uh, so how soon in that cycle do we need to start pumping current into the coil to make the magnetic field rise with the right timing? With a high KV motor, the motor's moving more quickly, so we need to start earlier because we need to get there before the, the actual uh, motor reaches the right point in its rotation. But stronger magnets uh, make the back EMF detection rise faster 
And therefore, we detect the point where we need to start pumping the current in sooner because the magnet is stronger. Therefore, the higher the higher uh, the N52 class motor actually acts like we have a slightly different timing than a lower, like an N45 class motor. This is a stronger magnet. This is a weaker magnet. Uh, this is like an Emax Red Bottom is using N52. Actually, most modern motors are using N52 magnets these days, whereas N45, uh, like I think the Rotor Geeks motors I'm running, have N45 motors uh, magnets. Also, we have very low resistance windings, which means that they take the current and they build the magnetic field very quickly, which means that we can have slightly later timing, and these two things may balance out. So there you go. There's a little bit of a primer on how brushless motors work and a little bit of insight into what Quad McFly is saying here. Hope that was all educational. Hope you feel slightly smarter than when you came in here, and, uh, and as always, happy flying.